Hi everyone. I wanted to share today just about my children and tapping with families. Um, I have three kids. Um, my son's 17, Harry, Emily, she's 14, and little Tabitha, she's six. Um, Harry's so much like me in, a, in every way. The way he looks, the way he acts, the way he feels. My second daughter, she's like her dad, really very opposite in many ways. And the little one, she's a mix. She's a mix of both. And since I've been tapping, something new is emerging. Something that, that none of us have. And so, backtrack about three years ago before tapping, she would, admittedly she was, you know, three, and doing her thing, tantrums and stuff, but she would get so knotted up in her own little rage for the slightest little trigger, she would run and hide, curl up in a ball and put the nastiest face on she could and just scowl at you. And her big siblings were terrified of her, you know. <laughs> she wouldn't forgive, she wouldn't forget, she would hold a grudge and she would stay there for an hour. And there was nothing that you could do to pull her out of it. And so this was, you know, it was a part of her, but it, it was concerning. So um, I found tapping. I was tapping on myself and I went to my son. I'm like, oh, do you need help with that? You know, mummy needs to practice. And he'd be like, get away. <laughs> And my daughter, she had some sleep issues and um, she's really feisty and so I launched in, come on mummy can tap on you and she was like, no, get away. <laughs> and then little Tabitha was having her tantrum and I said, come on darling, mummy can tap on you, let it go. And she also physically pushed me away. I thought, okay, there's <laughs> another way to this. So I was just, you know, thinking about it all as time went on and she had another episode and um, so I thought I'll use Fast Roof Tea language instead and ask her, notice what you're feeling. Is that a good feeling or a bad feeling? She'll say it's a bad feeling and notice a good feeling. How does that feel? Which one do you want to feel? And um, she would sit there and think about it and she was just like this at me. And, um, I said, when you're ready, mummy's here for you and you can come and give me a hug. And a minute went by and then she came flying through the room, flying into me and gave me a big hug and started to cry. So this happened a few more times. And then I thought, we were having a great day one day. We were having lots of fun and um, we were playing and laughing. And I said to her, you know when you see mummy tapping, um, you saw her that time when she got bitten by an ant, a jumping jack and it didn't hurt anymore and it really helped me and she said yes i said and you know that time when we were together and i banged my head and i started tapping and I, then i felt so much better and she said yes and i said you know when i'm just tapping outside by myself and how do i look and she said you look really happy and really relaxed and i said do you want to know what that feels like and she thought about it and she said yeah i do so she lay down and I just started, I said, let's play a game. As I tap, I want you to count how many times I tap. And so she just said one, two, you know, because she's proud of her counting abilities at the moment. So she's like, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two. And we did that. And then the next round, I just kept on tapping, but I didn't um, count. Um, and I did peace, deep breath in, and I just kept doing that. And she closed her eyes, and the most beautiful look came over her face. And she said, Mummy, that feels so beautiful. I really love it. Can you do it again? <laughs> you know, so she had a positive association with tapping then. Um, another time, then I, I came across the barnyard technique. And I said to her, do you want to play another game? So when she was happy, we played this other game. And I said to her, I'm going to tap and ask you, what sound does a chicken make? And so as I was tapping, I said, what sound does a chicken make? And she was like, quack, 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 quack. 
And what, what sound does a cow make? Moo. What sound does a horse make? Nee. And she was loving it. And then I was like lost for an animal and I said some animal that had, didn't make a sound, right? Like a, I don't know, zebra or something. And uh, we didn't know and we made the most hilarious sound, right? And so that was the next game to make stupid, silly noises of animals. Anyway, we were crying, laughing, rolling around. And um, so then she had another, less and less of these kind of emotional extremes. Um, and whenever one would happen, I would shout across the room, what sound does a chicken make? And, and it would just dissipate, you know, and, and less and less and less. She doesn't do this anymore. I know she's six, but um, so many things have happened since then, so there's this new part of her em emerging. And um, so, yeah, I reminded her it was her choice. Um, that was really important. Um, oh, and out of that, I, I realised, don't hide your tapping at home. Don't, all, all the time, you can, you know, when you've got big stuff, obviously, you can sit away and deal with that, but don't hide your tapping. And I did hide it for quite a long, long time. Um, you let them see and hear how it helps you you know, like telling them the story of the ant bite and, oh wow, it was amazing, my pain went away. Um, and I feel so much better now, I feel so much relaxed and just letting them see you tapping. If they don't want you to tap on them, which is fair enough, um, when, it, when, in, when everyone's ready, they come to it. But just for them to see you tapping and improving, um, you know, it gets in there for them, it's getting in there. Um, so yeah, it, otherwise it keeps it weird just to normalise it. Um, so the icing on the cake recently was um, my teenagers are getting very independent and I'm feeling left out and rejected. <laughs> and so my teenage daughter triggered me early one morning. She got up and her pants weren't dry for school and she venomously turned to me. She said, Mum, my pants are sopping wet. And she stormed off with her pants. And I'm like, give them to me. I'll put them in the dryer, etc." And she slammed her door. She wouldn't come out. She put her wet pants on, etc. I said, you know, whatever, do it yourself. Went to bed and had a cry, feeling rejected, etc. So my little one, she heard all of this and she said, Mummy, can I come in and give you a cuddle? And I said, yes, darling. So she came into bed with me and she looked at my face and she said, why are you crying? And I said, oh, it's okay, darling. Did you hear everything? She said, yes. And I said, I'm all right. And then she picked up my hand and she started to <laughs> tap on me with my hand. I was, it got such a shock. I was like, and then I said to her, well, what should I say? And she thought a minute and then she took her own hand and she said, I forgive myself. I forgive myself, I forgive myself. Tears are pouring down my face. <laughs> and she did the piece, and she did three rounds of I forgive myself. And I was crying and crying by the end. I felt so amazing for her, for me, for the possibilities. And I praised her the whole of the day and just told her what, how amazing she is and how powerful we all are and she just look, kept looking at me like really and it was so beautiful so she she um, colors in my happy journal <laughs> for me and draws pictures in there so I said would you like your own happy journal and she said yeah so we've just started and um, because she's six, she's learning how to spell, and so she spells phonetically, you know, how it sounds, which is so beautiful to read. And so first is, this is my initials. This is how you spell my name, Tabitha. And then we've got, um, I love possums. They are so cute, C-Y-O-O-T. <laughs> <laughs> And we've got, um, 
I am grateful for my mum, myself, my room, my friends, my family, my healthy bones, <laughs> my house, my toy Tiggy, and all of my toys, my dad, my sister, my dog, Billy, my brother, and those are what I'm grateful for from Tabitha. And this is a letter that she wrote to a boy at school. <laughs> so over here she did a beautiful cover, I love you Leo. Now this blows me away, this letter, because I don't know where she got this from. I don't know where she found the words to feel these things. And I'll just read it to you. Dear Leo, I know you love me and I love you too. But sometimes I feel something inside me like we are meant to be together and it just feels special. I love you, Leo. I love you, love from Tabitha. <laughs> so I realise that I've been in a grump and in my resentment and funk most of my adult life my husband, I don't do that anymore. My husband does, <laughs> still. You know, moody for days, for weeks and months. And the kids were copying us. They copy us. And she was copying us. Yeah, so she doesn't do that anymore. And something new is emerging. So that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.